oh, that's the get together for the political elections. It's called the caucus. I'm like, Wait, am I supposed to go to that? Because I am running. Well, you haven't even registered yet, Sonny. So, and besides, guess what? You can register, but you're not old enough yet. Have you read the rules? You got to go to the site, read the rules. Well, you said I could decide whatever I want. So I decided that I'm 35 and can apply. You can decide whatever you want. I'm just telling you the rules. So this is where you decide how to be creative. A little clever as well. Well, here's the idea, Eric. Remember, I said, you know, very literal. And so when something is said, you want to see more than what you think it is. How are you going to be intuitive if you just think according to what you've always been taught? That's a good point. How, how do I read between the lines, if you will? Well, it takes practice, Sonny. And so, again, you got to be slapped around a little bit, and pretty soon you get it. Don't do that. I don't really want to be, like, slapped. <laughs> See, again, you're taking oh, it literal. That's See? right. See? See? Again, do you, do you want to read between the lines? I just gave you a hint, and then you, you went literal on me. Well, not on me. Somebody else. I don't know who it is. But anyhow. Yeah. I miss Phil, yeah. Phil's, Phil's very calm and cool, yes. And so, again, you, you learn a lot from Phil, yes. He's the man with the turtle because he's just very casual, takes his time. That's the idea of the turtle. So even when you don't like someone, you play the game and you be very considerate. So just like when the Russians are talking to the Americans across the table on the on the newscast. They they look very nice to each other. They're very polite and et cetera. So you just play the game. That's so like all. behind the camera, they are fist fighting, right? Well, they could be. Yes, they could grab one of the wires and choke the other guy. You never know. That could be fun. Well, it's not necessary though, because remember. Right. Yeah, of course. Well, we're all beings of light and life is awareness. So you have to practice, you know, going to that idea that life is awareness. Uh, it's not a battle show like we've been through. You see, otherwise that keeps you here. Yeah. So, again, it, it takes a lot. It takes many, many years. That's, again, 50 years. You know, and even, even then, number. yeah, most people don't get it. Even after that, because... We've been here for lifetimes, lifetimes, Eric, thousands of lifetimes trying to figure it out. And, you know, 50 years is nothing. And you have the key. I don't have the key. Life well, is. You're like sharing. The right. You're the only one that's like getting out there, like sharing the deeds. Yeah. Well, I love the I love the challenge and the adventure. And besides, I really care. That's the biggest part. You have to care. It's not about, see, the spiritual path when you go to them or religion or whatever. People, you know, beg Jesus, beg God, beg their master, their gurus, whatever, for salvation or, you know, save me and do this and do that. Well, that's a start, but that's not it. There's a bigger picture. And the best part is, is that when you really at some point start to recognize what all life is, you'll realize that everything that's possible or you will ever need is already available to you. You simply learn to recognize it. Yeah, more than creation. Now, that recognition and creation are two different things entirely. Like night and day whatever yeah like water and air two different things entirely and that's the part that most people haven't been presented with they've been presented with the black and white idea you know that things are a particular way and that you know life is according to what you think and what have you but again those ideas are in creation and so it takes a lot 
to get to the point where you start to recognize what else there is. Yeah. So little by little, we go through it. And your real side experiences, because you are the experiencer, and little by little, life is showing you, just like your parents, a little at a time, they showed you this and that, whatever it is, as you grew up, so you got to be where you are, you're now Eric, uh, because of that, you know, they helped you along in a particular way. It's not a perfect system, parenting with children. No, it's not a perfect system, but it got you somewhere. And so again, to the point to where you are the decider. But I'm already the big brain. Could I be the big brain and the decider? You'd be whatever you want. <sighs> so I can be 35. Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, That's yeah. just. You know, see, the interesting thing about this world is, is that everybody creates their own restrictions. And uh, the rule makers, the lawmakers, whatever you want to call them, those individuals that have stepped up and said, OK, we'll make the laws, we'll do this. You know, they decided, huh? It's going to be me one day soon. Well, well they have decided laws. to create restrictions accordingly because this is their game. You see, just like the game of chess, who who decided the moves of each player? Again, somebody decided that, and that became, uh, you know, agreeable. Now, really, in chess, you can play it like checkers if you want, but really doesn't matter. But the thing is that uh, somebody decided the rules and got people to agree. So someone's decided the rules, and... You know, just like uh, every president that's been in office, we'll use that as an example. Uh, they're, they're, they've all been silly. They're, they're all funny. Uh, and basically, none of them obey the, obey the laws or the rules because uh, with their position, uh, because of their connections to who made the rules, they're, you might say they're above the law or they're above the rules, etc. So, again, that's how they play the game. And uh, that, that's what they like to do, just like naughty kids, you know, um, think it's funny to be naughty. And so, but they watch everybody else suffer with the rules at the same time, but they are the rule makers. This is how the game is played. So, yeah, you decide how you're going to play the game because that's all it is. It's just a game. So when I get into office, I just need to like follow the rules and I'm good, right? Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And remember, someone else made the rules, not you. Oh, well, yeah. So they're deciding for you, aren't they? So I need to strip it all away and start anew. With a new well, country, with new again, rules. This is this is creation, and each person uh, has the right to do whatever they want in creation. Just like the people that made the rules, they have the right to do it, and they've got an agreement. And so again, uh, there's always room for negotiation, uh, you know, etc. So yeah, you you can do whatever you want. You you can figure it any way you want. Okay, you're my imaginary campaign manager, right? Hear me out. Maybe we should shift, like, the campaign strategy. Because previously, I've been really going for the whole, um, I'm going to tell you the truth about the world. And also, you're going to get free Apple Jacks for life. And, and people seem to enjoy that. But I feel like maybe we could do great if our campaign pitch is something like... Um, we're going to destroy the United States and make a new country where I'm the ruler. Do you think people would go for that? Well, again, that's your thinking. Is that a no? You got anybody else that agrees to that? In other words, just find one person that agrees to that. Do you agree with that? You could be my one person. Do I agree to it? Sure. 
I'm fine with whatever you do, but uh, cool. I've got my one person. I'm fine with whatever you do, but you have to understand that, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's not something that I would campaign. Okay, okay. but not a good I'm idea. Fine with whatever you do. So again, you have to understand that. Yeah. So if that if that's what you want for your campaign, yeah, that's fine. But it has nothing to do with me. Well, you're my imaginary campaign manager, so I figured I had to run by when I'm by you. You know, got to well, really kind of like work together on this campaign. Well, here's how the campaign manager works. Okay, so okay. yeah, you're the candidate. You're the one putting yes. yourself out there. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And so you've had the experience. Okay, it was your experience. You were, you know, Rebazar provided the experience for you. You know, he set all that up for you. He set the stage for you. Now, from that, you are the decider. Now, me as campaign manager, you might say, um, as your imaginary campaign manager, uh, you know, all I can do is advise, okay? Doesn't mean that I agree with what you decide. That's your decision because you have to face that, just like I have to face my decisions. So there's the idea. So just because I say it's okay doesn't mean that I agree. I agree with whatever you decide because it's your decision and you have to face it, uh, et cetera. But all I can do is advise, you know, just like your teacher in school, you know, they can advise you on something, but they're not going to do it. You're going to be doing it. Right. So what do you advise? What's your advice here for the campaign? Well, first of all, uh, you have to. OK, what does it take? What makes sense? Like anything, what makes sense? Just like if you're going to. You know. Join, uh, run the marathon. Okay, what do you have to do first? You gotta, you gotta sign up, right? Yeah. Okay. So after uh, so I sign up, then what? Yeah, you gotta sign up. So you see, you're sitting here talking, really, to yourself. So you have to go through the steps. Well, I if do you're like gonna to talk to myself. The outside world. See, you're dealing with the outside world now. It's gonna be outside of your mind and your house. So you well, I have, have been doing that. Yeah, so you I have, have to, to like campaign thing. things. Well, step one is you have to sign up. Okay, so, so you're I, no. I like skip step one. Do I like go back and do it now? You do what? I, I kind of skipped step one, so I, I didn't really sign up, but I still went and campaigned already. Um, you you can do that. You okay, can do that. I can go back. Yeah, okay, I'm going to give you a good example. Sure. Jesus, Jesus did that. Jesus did that. Jesus he went out. President? No, I'm talking about campaigning. Oh. Oh. Jesus went and campaigned. Hold on to that literal horse of yours, okay? Okay. Pull on the horse. Yeah. I don't Jesus have a horse. Jesus went and campaigned. Do I need to get a horse? And the end result was what? He got murdered. He got nailed to the cross, didn't he? He deserved yeah. it, too. Well, that's an extreme example, okay? There's many okay. examples. Yeah, I, I hope I won't be, like, nailed to a cross and killed. <laughs> I mean, I well, might I be at this rate. <laughs> I thought there was a little bit of humor there, okay? Because I know the end result of it. So, again... Uh, you know, like a stand-up comedian, I, I know the punchline, all right? Yeah, so again, uh, you decide how you're going to do this. So if you're going to play with the big boys, because that's what you're doing, you've got to put money in the pot. In other words, you have to commit yourself in some way. Otherwise, you're nothing. you got to show them that you're something if you're really going to do it. Now, how are you going to do that? Um, by campaigning. Well, again, at some point, you have to sign up. 
You have to get your right, name okay. on the ballot. You have to get your name on the ballot, young man. You have to sign up. Otherwise, there could be a write-in either way. Well, okay, that's that's an idea. All right, you figure that out. You can do that. But I, I should sign up, probably right. But you you are my imaginary campaign manager, so I should I should listen to your advice. You've got to play the game with them in some way. You have to commit yourself in some way. In other words, if you wanna if you wanna go play in the big poker game, and there's you know five people sitting around the table, and these are you know high stakes. You know, you can stand in back of the poker players and say this or that or do this or that. But until you sit down and you put your money on the table, you're not part of it. You see, that's where you really take the risk when you really step in and be part of it. So you're saying I should raid Donald Trump's speech, whatever the next one is that he does. I'll raid it and I'll take the podium and I will... Give my speech. Right? Is that what you mean? Well, that's not what I said, but... Oh, okay. Is it a good idea, though? Because I could do it. Well, again, that's in your mind. All right? Now, besides me, all right, remember, I'm just your campaign manager. All I can do is advise. I'm not part of, of your commitment. All right. You you have to stop being literal on this and be creative. You see when uh, the so-called president or somebody speaking on TV like that, you see, you can't just be literal. You have to be creative, evasive, tricky, all these things. Use all hand right? gestures. Yeah. Trump does a lot of Besides those. Besides just what you learned in high school. Okay. So your world is the gaming world, and it's very literal. It's cut and dried, just basically how it is, okay? You sit there and you push buttons. That's all literal, all right? All that is literal. All the things you're doing is literal. It's one dimension to this world. That's as far as it goes. And, you know, many of these people are actually multidimensional in their own way. They don't realize all the, all of it, but they, they do... Uh, know some of it okay and they're really taught and rehearsed you know obama was uh rehearsed for over 30 years before he came became president they grabbed these guys and they rehearsed them for decades before they're ready to see if they're ready to go and they have a lot of competition not just them they just make it by themselves as they get a lot of competition they grab a lot of people uh, that will really go the mile to uh, to do it. And it takes a lot of preparation. Yeah, it's going to take you years if you really want to do that. But I only have this year to, like, run because the, no, the election is no, this year. No, the, the election is this year and then four years from now. You're a young man. It's and, uh, That's so long, it's not, though. It's not about time. It's about when you're really ready. Well, okay. You're right. But by 2028, the U.S. might already be destroyed. So, like, I got to get there first. I don't want to miss my chance okay, so to destroy had, the United States. You had the experience. Okay, so we know that. That's a given. And, yes, things will be destroyed. Eventually, all of it will be destroyed. Well, now, who can say exactly when? But the idea is, is that now you've had these experiences on the real side and you see kind of what's taking place, Eric. So uh, you should have gotten a hint by now that, you know, a step at a time, you're going to be shown as you decide. So, again, something's been presented to you. Now, what you decide from that and accordingly, your experiences are going to be along those lines. Now. Also, you can think it, but you must have the intent also because Rebazar and the boys see your intent. They don't care what you're thinking. Okay, that's just your personal self. It's all about your intent. That's the real you. If you intend to do it and stick to it. Now, 
You cannot fool them. They will know. And they're going to give you experiences along that those lines. They're going to give you hints, etc. And they will help prepare you on the real side. It's not as much here, but it's about awareness. And so, again, you've been taught thinking that it's here. No, without the real side, you've got nothing. So you have to be prepared on the real side and you have to have a real sincere intent to follow through no matter what and be creative and learn to be creative at the same time because they're not going to do it for you. Just like your teacher in school, you know, you have to learn to be creative to do your homework. Teacher's going to give you the lesson and give you hints. But the teacher's not going to do the lesson for you. Teacher's not going to live your life for you. You see? So again, you've been given the experience. Remember, you want to remember that experience if you really want to do it. You really want to take a look at that experience over and over and over again many, many times because there are things in there to realize and recognize that at first you don't uh, that at first you do not see. And it will take you years to really understand that experience. Yeah, very real. Yeah, you have to listen to that part of it, and that is that you have to get out of yourself. You only know so much. First of all, you've never done this. This is all brand new. So you can't think you know what to do because you don't. You do not know what to do. When I was given the Rod of Power in 2000, 2001, um, I had been with Paul in that car for 30 years. And that was just my prelude, just to get me ready. But when they gave me the rod of power, doesn't mean I was ready. I still had to blend into that. And I even stepped back after a year and a half because it was too much. And then I went through a lot of stuff for like three or four years. And then Rebazar brought me back in in 05, uh, excuse me, 07. Uh, and then it took me quite a few years to finally figure out what I was really going to do, and then it became the new presentation. I didn't do this overnight. I went through a hell of a lot to figure this out to where nobody else could. So your journey here is huge. It's bigger than you can imagine. That's if you decide. Otherwise, you don't have to. You can just stay as you are. You decide. So they're, they're giving you something there. So really, what is it? You know, that's for you to figure out. 